Hi everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Getting Technology Donations Through TechSoup. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Susan Bard, and I am the online training producer here at TechSoup. We do want this presentation to be relevant and interactive to the important work you do. You are going to have opportunity to ask questions. We are going to practice navigating the TechSoup website and participate in some fun live poll questions. Please know that your opinion is very important to us, and it will help us improve our trainings. So please complete our survey at the end of the webinar. Let's take a moment to talk about ReadyTalk. I want to make sure everyone is comfortable using the platform. On the bottom left-hand side of your screen there is a chat box. Here is where you can ask any of your questions or if you have problems viewing the slides or hearing the audio. The chat box also will be using that to queue up your questions for later review. Remember if you lose your connection, you can always reconnect using the link in your registration or reminder email. If you are hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having any issues with the audio, you can dial in using the toll-free line listed in your registration email. A few things to note, we are recording this presentation. And you will be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar page in about a week. This is where we share all of our webinar recordings and announce upcoming webinars. And you can check it out at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also review any recorded webinars and videos on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash TechSoupVideo. All of you attending will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recorded presentation as well as any resources we share today including a question and answer document that we will gather from today's questions. If you are following along on Twitter, you can tweet us at TechSoup or using hashtag TSWebinars. Joining us today is TechSoup's Content Director, Arielle Gilbert-Knight, and Bevan Garrett, our TechSoup Account Management Specialist. And she is the super knowledgeable expert, and she is here to answer all of your questions. So we don't want you to be shy. You can chat in your questions during the presentation, and we'll also have an opportunity at the end. Also here with us on our back end is Kevin Lowe, and he's going to help answer any technical concerns in the chat box. Let's talk a little bit about the objectives. As part of your registration, you gave us some feedback on what you wanted to learn about in this webinar, and we appreciate you taking the time to do that because it lets us focus on the specific topics that you need. And again, don't worry. We'll take time during the end of the webinar to answer your questions. The first thing we're going to do today is demonstrate how to complete TechSoup's donation eligibility quiz. We'll explain and demonstrate the registration process and talk about the benefits of registering as a member. We're going to show and explain the details of the administrative fees, restrictions, and limits. We're going to demonstrate the procedure for requesting donations. We'll actually go through the steps, put it in a cart, and almost check out. And we're also going to provide details about specific donation programs like Microsoft, Adobe, QuickBooks, and more. Overall, we really want to increase your comfort level in navigating TechSoup.org and answer your questions. So I'm going to talk for a few seconds about TechSoup. TechSoup is headquartered here in San Francisco, California. And I know that a lot of you are joining us from around the country, Canada, and even all over the world. So take a minute and go ahead and in the chat box, type where you are coming from or where you are watching this webinar from. And while you are doing that, I am going to talk a little bit about TechSoup. We are a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. We work to empower organizations around the world to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources to help them achieve their mission. You can see from our map here that we serve almost every country in the world, and we have 62 partners. NGOs around the world. The need is global, 
And we have a dedicated website for countries outside of the U.S. at www.techsoup.global. This is where folks outside of the U.S. would access the technology donations that I'll be talking about today. So let's see, it looks like we have someone here from sunny Palm Beach, Florida, Seattle, D.C., North Dakota, Nebraska, but it's cold there, Arizona. All right, folks are coming from all over the country. Thank you. Um, a little bit about our impact. We've helped organizations get more than $5.2 billion in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. These technology products and grants come from more than 100 corporate and foundation partners. As part of our interactive presentation, we're going to be asking you a poll. In our first poll, we want to find out a little more about how you use TechSoup and if you use TechSoup. So we want to know how often do you go onto the website and use our products, either searching for products or looking for webinars. So I'm going to give you 5 seconds. I'm going to give you a countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wow. Okay, so it looks like some of you um, have never used the site before. That's okay, about half of you, because we're going to do a, a tour of our home page and definitely of the product donation process. Some of you use the site occasionally, and there's a small percentage of you that go every day. Yes. And no one did click, hope you get the free tote bag. That's good, because that was just a trick answer. There won't be any free tote bags today. Okay, I'm going to be transitioning over to sharing my desktop. So as I transition, let us know in the chat box if you're unable to see my screen. So I want to make sure everyone's able to see that screen. Okay, good. If you're going to TechSoup for the first time or you haven't been here in a while, you may be greeted with our new Splash page which talks about Meet TechSoup. And there's lots of opportunities here where you can find out about all the things we do. And I'm going to also show you our home page. And here is our TechSoup home page. And I'm going to give you a quick orientation to our home page, talk a little bit about where to find things. So essentially at the very top of the page, we have this window with a couple of tabs. So you can see that we're featuring Office 2016, the second tab, QuickBooks, and then the third tab, we have an advertisement for the webinar you're on with us today. As you scroll down our home page, you can see that there are articles and how-tos so some self-help and self-education products. As you get to the middle of the page, you can also see we have another listing of upcoming featured events. And then when you get to the bottom, here is where you can subscribe to our newsletters. And for those of you that are new to the site, this is important because our newsletters are a great way for you to get information about upcoming products or events. So if you wanted to subscribe to our newsletters, you can click on Subscribe. And we have a couple of different newsletters. We have Buy the Cup. That's uh, once a week, and it provides you with information on exciting new product donations, upcoming webinars, technology learning resources. We also have a product alert. And this is where you would go if you want to be the first to know about the newest and most interesting product donations. And then lastly, if you're joining us here today from a library, this newsletter is for you. And it's geared specifically for the library community. And it's TechSoup for Libraries. Also at the bottom of our page, you could follow us on any of the social media channels.
Okay, so as I scroll up to the top, we're going to talk a little bit about something a lot of you have asked about, which are how do I know if I'm eligible for donations? So we're going to show you a couple of quick ways that you can learn if you're eligible. The first one is the eligibility quiz. So you can get to the eligibility quiz under Get Products and Services. And you can go ahead and scroll down to check your eligibility. And this is a really quick way to do this. There's only five key ingredients you'll need. I'm going to click on that and show you. So the first data point that you'll need you're going to need to select if you're a 501c3 nonprofit, 501c3 public library, or a non-501c3 public library. And I'm going to go ahead and just click 501c3 nonprofit. Then you're going to select where you're located. And I'm here in California. Then the next thing is your organization mission. Um, these are two elements that are key ingredients. Um, the one is your organization type, and the other is your organization subtype. These are elements that you'll need to know, or you'll need to most guess and closely associate your organization with some of these types. So for my example today, I'm going to say that I'm a cultural, historical, or other educational activities. And then for the subtype, I'm going to say that we are arts and culture. And then the last ingredient here is your annual operating budget. And we're going to say that my organization has an operating budget of $500,000. And then you're going to click on Check Eligibility. Great. See how fast that was? It was super easy. And then it tells you, based on the information that you give, these are the products that you're likely eligible for. So you can see all of the products listed here. So you guys can do this right now or immediately after this webinar. You can check out what products you're eligible for. Great. Now, a lot of you were wondering about the registration process and associating yourself with an existing organization. So for those of you who aren't yet registered or you aren't sure, I'm going to take you through the process of joining and creating a member ID and also creating an organization from scratch. So you can see here at the top of this page right now, there are two buttons. There's a Login button in blue. And then there's a Join button in orange. Let's say I'm not a member, so I'm going to click on Join. And I'm just going to create a fake ID. So I'm going to use my dog's name, Belle. She actually doesn't answer emails, but that's okay. Okay, and create her member name. And then you're going to create a good password, one that contains all of the elements, eight characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, and one number, and also one that you're going to remember. And then a security question. What's your favorite color? And Belle's favorite color is blue. And here's also where you can opt in to receive any of our newsletters. You can check any or all of them. I'm going to say Belle wants all of those. And also agree to the terms of use. I agree to TechSoup's Terms of Use and Privacy Policy. 
And then you're going to do a little math. So 7 plus 1, 8. And continue. And let it think for a second. And there we go. So now you can see up here that you're logged in, or Bell Test is logged in. And the next thing that the next step is to tell us about your organization. So there's a couple of things you're going to want to have as you do register, and if you do need to register your organization. You're going to need your organization's name, the mailing address, an email address. We're going to talk a little bit right now about the EIN or FSCS ID. Um, the employer identification number um, is something that's used by nonprofits. And for libraries, it's the FSCS ID, and that's from the IMLS database. Um, keep in mind, if you don't have any of that information right at that second, you can always save this for later and come back. Um, you also want to make sure um, when you check to see if your organization is already registered. Sometimes you think your organization isn't registered, but perhaps a board member or a volunteer has already registered. So let's go ahead and enter this EIN. And the next step is provide your organization's location. So there's a lot of companies that use this default EIN number. So I'm located here in California. Oops. And zip code 94109. Submit. And then there's going to be a list of organizations that come up in that area in that zip code. So you can check and see if your organization is listed. So let's say you don't see your organization listed. That's not a problem because you can add a new branch or location or a new organization by registering the organization right then. And you can click here for registering your organization now. Keep in mind that you're able to request donations on behalf of multiple organizations. So if you're on staff at more than one organization, maybe you're a volunteer at one, a board member at another, or you're the IT person at one, you can request donations on behalf of all of them as long as you're associated with, that, with all of those organizations and have permission to request donations on their behalf. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about creating a new organization. Here is where you're going to select your organization type and subtype. And we talked about this a little before, but I want to go into why we have these particular data points. These categories are created by the IRS. It's not something TechSoup made up. Um, but the good thing is that the org types and subtypes are universal in the registration of an organization, um, whether you're here in the U.S. or internationally. If um, you're in another country such as Ghana, you would simply follow the data entry points to register your organization, and that helps our global team validate your organization. So let's go ahead and create another organization, and I'm going to stick with the cultural, historical, or other educational activities in the organization type. And I'm going to say that we do arts education. And keep in mind that these also, the types and subtypes that you select, also determine your eligibility for certain products. So just like you, when you make a donation to an organization and you can decide the kind of organization you want to support, or the way a foundation decides to make grants, our donor partners also choose which kinds of organizations they want to support. And restrictions are set up by our donor partners. If your organization does a lot of different things, choose the organization type and subtype that best describes your primary mission. If you make a mistake, or you realize that you chose the wrong thing, you can always call or email Client Services Department. And if you have any questions once you're registered, they can help you change it. So then you go ahead and select your role. You can put in your organization. Bell's Ball. Bell's Fun. You can put in an address.
zip code, country, organization, email address. This is an important thing to recognize you should use an email address that's not a personal address. Use one that is going to be checked regularly. Um, ideally, also there's multiple people who have access to this email address because this is the one where all of the information about any product donation orders you've made will go to. So, oops. Bell. Okay. And then also your website. A phone number. And the next thing is the budget. Again, we covered this a little earlier, but you want to enter your budget because this is also a factor in determining your eligibility for products. Okay. And you click Continue. And then you can go ahead and look and check to see that everything is okay, and you can register your organization. So that's the registration process and also how to create a new organization. So for those of you that are new, you can do this after this webinar, or you could have done that along with me. Great. Now we're going to talk a little bit about if you are registered and logging in as an individual. I'm going to use my test account, and we're going to talk about the different product donations that we have and how to check your, uh, your eligibility once you're already logged in. So I'm going to log in right now. And this was a login I created before for testing. So once you're logged in and you see you're, that you are logged in at the top, you can actually do a quick check. You can check your eligibility. This is another way. You won't have to go through the quiz. You'll be able to select the organization that you're associated with. This is good in case you're associated with multiple organizations. And I'm going to check Test Susan. And again, this pops up. So you have all of the eligibility products you're eligible for, and you can click on any of these. Great. So this is a good transition for us to start talking about product donations. I'm going to show you how to navigate the four ways to browse donated products. When you go to Get Products and Services, you can see there's the, under the Browse Catalog, you can browse by donor or provider, by category or solution, or by organization type. So let's take a look at the Browse by Donor. And I'm going to choose Microsoft. So, and the Microsoft programs are some of our most popular programs. When you click on the Microsoft Software Donation Program, you can see on this page that you can browse Microsoft products. And this allows you to select what type of product you're most interested in. So there's some pull-down menus. Um, by default, this, this has defaulted to Microsoft Desktop Application Software. But you could also select any of these, PC Operating System Upgrades, server softwares and licenses. And as you select any of those, the other drop-down menu will change. Also on this page, as you're looking at the Microsoft Product Catalog, you can see on the right-hand side that there's a listing of related articles and how-tos. So what we've done is we've helped correlate the products with some of our um, our articles that we have, our blogs, and we also have webinars listed. So 
these are some opportunities for you to learn more about the product. And let's just say we wanted to take a look at Microsoft Office Professional Plus. And you can see here that there's the admin fee of $40, that there's a suite of nine Office products right here in just this little thumbnail. And you can click View Details to look at more details of this product. And as you click on the Office Professional Plus, you can scroll down and there are three tabs. Essentially, there is a description of the product, and that is in the top here. And it also tells you about how many licenses you will get. And in this particular product, it tells you that there is one license for installing the software on one device. And there is a summary of the volume licensing product terms for other licensing details. And if you keep on scrolling down, you can also see the versions of the software that are available, benefits to your organization, the applications in the suite, capabilities, again the volume licensing information. And then when you obtain the pro the, this product, the directions and what is going to happen, what you should expect to occur. Something else that is really nice about our Microsoft Office products is that there is a software assurance program. And this is important for you to note. It is definitely a benefit to you. And our software assurance program, I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to scroll down and you can see that there is a table of benefits with the software assurance summary. So there are software upgrades, the Office Multi-Language Pack, Suites for Home Use, Roaming Use Rights, e-learning courses, Backups for Disaster Recovery. And you can see there's a lot of opportunities here, a lot of benefits. So that's the Software Assurance Benefit Summary. And we're going to talk a little bit about the upgrade option with Microsoft products. If you purchase the product within – there's a two-year time frame. And you can up, if a new product comes out, you can upgrade to that new product. And equally, you can downgrade. Let's say you do purchase the product and you find out that your operating systems won't support it. Well, then you can also downgrade to the one previous. To the, to the, just checking with Bevan. Yes, excellent. Okay. So that's a little bit about how to get products from the donor or provider. Now I'm going to show you how to look by category or solution. So this is another way for you to look for a product. Let's say you have a challenge like. Um, Let's say you'd, you need a database. So you can click on Databases and Analytics. And then there's different product solutions. And you can see here the recommended products that we have for you to select from to order. And again, on the right-hand side, there's lots of supporting information to help you make the best decision and also to help support you once you've chosen that product and received it. And then lastly, we have by organization type. Actually, it's not last, but it's close to last. By organization type. So let's say you were a foundation, and you wanted to know what products and services are available to you or recommended for you. You can click on Foundations. And I'll give it a second. And you can see here there's a couple of tabs that you can go to. Tech for your foundation, tech for your grantees, international grant making, technology training. And again, there's lots of different 
organization types here, including um, religious organizations and schools. And then lastly, there's one other way for you to check for or to search for products, and that's in the upper right-hand corner. There's a search box where you can type in what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and select Microsoft Office Professional Plus. So that's what I'm looking for, Office Professional and click Search. That's because I spelled it wrong. There we go. Sorry about that. And you can do this along with me. So let's go ahead. Here we have Microsoft Office Professional Plus that came up, and I want to find out a little bit more about it. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but let's just quickly review in this thumbnail. There is some basic information. You can find out that there is a suite of nine Office products. There is also the administrative fee of $40. And then you can click on View Details. So once you have clicked on Microsoft Office Professional Plus, you are going to go ahead and take a look at the description of the product. Make sure this is the product you want. You can look at the system requirements. There is a link for the requirements. And then rules, eligibility, and restrictions. And we talked a little bit about that software benefit, software assurance benefit. But here is also where you have more information about what organizations are eligible for these products and ineligible organization types. Let's talk for a few minutes about the administrative fee. Um, administrative fees go directly to TechSoup. They don't go to Microsoft. Um, TechSoup charges this, this minimal fee so we can continue to support you and manage these donation programs and offer educational training programs like this one. We want you to select your product carefully. Make sure you read all of the description and the rules, eligibility, and restrictions because the admin fees are non-refundable. And also make sure that you are requesting the product for the right organization, especially if you are associated with multiple organizations. So let's go ahead and say that I want to order Office Professional Plus. So some of you are wondering about how you do this. I'm going to take you through each of the steps. So I'm going to make sure that I'm requesting it for the right organization. How many do I want? I want one. And I'm going to add it to my cart. And then you can – oh, it looks like I have two of them in there now. Let's see. I'm going to look at my cart. And you can see that there are six steps for you to get your technology donation. Oh, it looks like I ordered two. So as I'm checking through this, I realize that I only want one. So I can update the total. Okay, so here we have our Office Professional Plus. Total of $40. I want one. I'm going to confirm that. And I'm going to check to see if there are any restrictions for my organization. Okay, so what happens is there's some magic that happens on the back end. There are some folks that look at this and they check to see if the products in your cart are flagged. And the good news is this wasn't flagged. So that means I'm eligible for this particular software donation. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the donation request. And the next thing you're going to need to do is read and accept the agreement for the donations you've requested. This is important. Our donors ask us that you read this and sign it you know, by checking that you agree. 
because this is part of the relationship we have with our product donors. So you're going to read this. Check that you agree if you agree. And then go ahead and proceed with your donation request. And the next you would choose your shipping and delivery options and any messages. Again, this is where it's super important for you to check that email address and make sure it's a good working address and that it's checked regularly. And in case you've selected the wrong one, you can also change the email address for your organization there. Okay, so I already have this information in here, my shipping method, and I'm going to say yes. I want Microsoft Office Professional Plus. Okay, so now here we have the next step which is review and payment. You can pay with a credit card which is processed at that time, or you can pay by check. Keep in mind if you do pay by check, the product donation won't be issued until we've both received and processed your check. Okay. And because I'm not really making an order today, we're going to skip the next part, but here is where you would enter your information. Okay, great. So you know what? Let's take another look at something else. Let's take a look at Microsoft Office Standard. Let's see if we can find that product. Let's go back to our search. And you can do this along with me because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about what you see on the screen. So I'm going to do that search, Microsoft Office Standard. Hopefully I can spell it correctly. There we go. So if you're doing this with me or you're watching this on the screen, you can see our thumbnail here with Office Standard. So using your chat box, let's see, fastest fingers, how many applications or Office products are in Office Standard. Let's see how many people got it. All right, so it says right here too. This is an easy way to look. It actually says it right here, a suite of six Office products. Or you could click on View Details. Looks like almost everybody got it, right? Yay. Okay. And here you can also see under Applications in this suite. And you can see that there are six applications available. All right, good job everybody. Another quick quickie, we're going to look at Symantec. So I, you are going to need to do some math. And you can follow along with me. We're going to do a search for Symantec. And you can see here there's a couple of different options. And I'd like you to look at the Symantec Endpoint Protection Small Business Edition Protection for One Endpoint. So what this really is telling you is that when you purchase this, when you select this and make that order, your, the order actually covers one endpoint or one device. So here's where the math comes in. Let's say you have 10 endpoints or 10 devices. How much would the admin fee be? And you can chat that in. So this is for one, and let's say you have 10 endpoints. Okay. I'll give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so that would be $40. Great job, everybody. Okay. All right. 
What I'd like to do now is stop for a minute and get some questions from you as we've gone through this tour. We've shown you how to register yourself and to create a new organization as well as how to order products. So let's take a minute and take some questions. So you can type your questions in the chat box. A couple of people are asking, what if there is a software you'd like to use but it isn't on our list? So if you don't see a product that's listed on our website, um, one thing that you can do first of all is search by like the name of the product in the search bar if you're not finding it under Get Products and Services. But we also have a wish list that's available to our community where you're able to input a product that you're interested in. And then we do have people that review that information. And if we're able to, or if it's something that's in the works, we'll definitely um, reach out to the donor partner or see if that's something that might be made available if there's a big enough request for it. I forgot where to find that wish list at this time, <laughs> so I will have to – okay. Um, so we'll get some information out to everybody on how to find that information. But again, if it's not something that you see available, it is something that you can add to the wish list, which is very exciting. Thank you, Bevan. And we will have a document with questions and answers, so we'll make sure that we put that in there, and that will come along with your follow-up email in about a week. Another question that comes to us is the total cost to me for the software only the administrative cost. So what does the administrative cost cover? So this really depends on the product that you're looking at. If you're looking at something that's more of a software donation like a Microsoft Office or some Mantech endpoint protection, those are things that you're just going to be paying the administrative fee for. There are services that we offer that are more subscription-based, GoToWebinar or anything from Citrix, Adobe Creative Cloud. These are subscription-based services. So what that means is that you pay the administrative fee to us, and this is what grants you access to the discounted rates that are being offered. And in these cases, you will also have to pay the donor partner directly. And there will be more information about how you would do that once you receive the fulfillment email for the product donation. So again, if it's something that's software-based, it's only going to be the administrative fee that you're paying. But if you're looking at a subscription-based service, then there will likely be an additional fee owed to whatever donor partner you're looking at. Great. Thank you. Um, another question is, are you limited on how many donations that you can get every year? This is a really good question. It's a very popular one. Lots of phone calls are from this question. Um, there is no limit to the amount of requests that you can place through TechSoup. We would love it if you came every single day and requested one item each day. However, each of our donor partners have set up their own allotments, and that usually runs on a fiscal year cycle which is June 30th through July 1st. And within that fiscal year, they have set up a certain amount of products that you're able to receive um, from their donation program. For example, Adobe products, you're able to request four per fiscal year. Um, Microsoft has a much, much wider um, allotment for their donation cycle. Um, you can find any of the information about allotments available for the products under the Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions tab on any one of the product pages. This breaks down what you can get per fiscal year, budget restrictions, any other need-to-know information that might limit you from being able to place the request. Great. Thank you. Um, someone asked, are any products available for download, or do they all have to be shipped? So this is a fun one. All software donations obtained through TechSoup are electronic download, meaning you'll receive a fulfillment email that will contain a link and instructions on how to complete the download or installation of your product. Uh, the only things that are actually physically shipped out would be hardware products that are offered as a donation like computers, uh, Cisco products, but everything else is going to be software and that's electronically downloaded. So it's always going to be an email. Great. So we've covered software. What about hardware, Bevan? Yeah, so again, hardware is going to be physically shipped out. You're going to want to pay – when you go through the actual uh, donation process, it's going to verify the address for you. 
Um, a lot of nonprofits operate from like a PO box when they, that's where they get their mail to. Um, in those cases, we're going to request that you update your address to be an actual physical address because we can't leave a computer at a PO box and we'd like to deliver it to your hands personally so that we can see your big smile on your face when you get your donation. Great. I think we have another question here. Are churches and other religious organizations eligible? Absolutely. If you're a church, you're more than welcome to participate in our donation program. While all churches are considered tax-exempt entities, in order to participate in our donation program, you would have to be a 501c3 nonprofit. Some churches don't independently have this status on their own, and that's fine. If you find that this is the case, or if we find that this is the case, we'll try and find a national account that you're affiliated with. For instance, if you're a Baptist church, you may be affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention, in which case we can um, throw you under their group exemption, and you'll be able to participate in our donation program. So if you have any questions, or if you know that you're affiliated with a national account, and you may not have 501c3 status on your own as a church, um, I would say it's a best practice to email us or give us a phone call, and we'll help get that straightened out right away. Um, there's always an option for a church, even if you're not a 501c3. We'll just have to dig, dig a little bit more to find out how we can get you guys eligible. Thanks. Another question, is there a way to track things that have been ordered? So if you're looking um, for something as far as a software donation that you've requested and you're wondering what the status is, you can call us or email us. It usually takes a few business days in order to receive that initial fulfillment email. If you're looking at something that's more hardware based, typically the donor partner that you're requesting from will send you an email that has tracking information or some sort of time frame about when you can expect to receive your product donation. Uh, for hardware items, it can take a few weeks to actually receive the product. So you'll want to pay attention to the email that's sent out originally, because that will give details on whether or not the partner will contact you about uh, tracking information for your product donation. And if you have any questions, you can always give us a call and we'll refer you to the appropriate resource. Okay, another question is what about tech support for the software after you order from TechSoup and install it? That's a really good question. So people like myself who are around to answer your questions aren't necessarily trained in the technical aspects or product functionality of our donor partner's products. In this case, really the information that we have is limited to what's available to you on the product page or whatever Google can produce for us. Um, typically when you call us, if it's something that we can answer, we'll definitely give it a shot. But if not, we're likely going to refer you to the donor partner because they do have phone numbers or support links that will uh, enable, enable you to get the support that you need for your specific issue that you're having with the product donation. Um, so in, if all else fails, give us a call and we'll send it to the right people or answer it if we can. Okay, I think we have addressed most of the questions in our chat box. I'll give one last look. And just so everyone knows, the webinar is being recorded and folks will be able to access the information. You will receive an email to this in about a week and it will be available on our webinar archive. But before we do that, I'm going to turn it over to Arielle Gilbert-Knight. She's going to talk a little bit about our TechSoup donation program. Hi, everybody. We got a few questions, quite a few actually, about whether TechSoup offers hardware donations, and Bevan addressed that a little bit as well. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what's available and a couple of places you can look on TechSoup.org. If you are interested in hardware, we do indeed offer uh, donated and discounted both new and refurbished hardware. So that includes Laptops and desktops and tablets, uh, things like projectors and monitors are all available through uh, TechSoup donation programs. 
One great place to go is our relatively newly launched hardware page at TechSoup.org slash hardware. And that's where we really highlight the most exciting additions to our catalog. And actually we just in uh, this week actually updated our hardware catalog with uh, four new um, offerings. So um, do feel free to check out TechSoup.org slash hardware to see the latest and greatest of what's available. We also offer a special subscription. It's a relatively new offer through TechSoup. It's an annual subscription called Boost, which provides deals um, on new and refurbished hardware. So um, all of the technology that's available through TechSoup is you know, donated or substantially discounted, uh, but the uh, Boost subscription provides additional details to subscribers. So for example, uh, Boost members uh, can get an InFocus 10-inch tablet for $139 for Boost subscribers, whereas for a regular TechSoup member it would be $179. So if you're in the market for a lot of hardware, uh, Boost is a really great way to get access to that. Boost subscribers also get a lot of other nifty benefits such as access to products with uh, no admin fees as well as a $25 TechSoup voucher. Uh, some of the zero admin fee products that are in Boost right now are um, fundraising related tools. So there are things like Shopify which allows you to have an online storefront, and Teespring which allows you to do t-shirt fundraisers. So I know a majority of you are probably winding down and just getting off the, uh, the tail end of your year-end fundraising. So now might be time when you are totally burnt out on talking about fundraising, but also might be the time when you are thinking about what uh, new tools might help uh, with your 2016 fundraising goals. So Boost gives access to a lot of uh, new and exciting interesting products that might round out your fundraising portfolio. Another interesting program available through TechSoup is JourneyEd. Those of you who have done work with schools might be familiar with JourneyEd. They offer academic pricing and discounts to schools on hardware and software and many other kinds of products. And they've partnered with TechSoup to also extend those academic discounts for schools also to nonprofits and libraries. So there are thousands of products, and if there is something that you are interested in that isn't available through the TechSoup catalog, JourneyEd uh, subscription access is a really nice way to have access to an additional 200 donor partners uh, as well as thousands of things like hardware, software, but also like audiovisual equipment and office supplies and discounts uh, that might also be helpful for your organization. Finally, we've included a list here of our most popular donation programs, and you'll be receiving a link to this. You'll be receiving a copy of this presentation in the follow-up email. So this is just a good quick reference list of links for you for the top donation programs that are available through TechSoup. If you have questions about specific programs, uh, any of these listed here or any other ones, I am totally happy to spend a couple of minutes prior to the end talking about them. So if you chat in questions, I will answer them. Somebody asked, what was the name of the t-shirt fundraiser? It is Teespring. And somebody else asked about the Boost subscription. The Boost subscription rate varies depending on your organization's budget. So there's a rate for small, medium, and large size organizations. So it's tiered to make it most affordable depending on how big your organization is. And you can find out more about it at TechSoup.org slash Boost. All right, I'm not seeing many other product-specific questions rolling in, so I will hand it back over to Susan. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Arielle. Um, we have gotten quite a few questions about licensing. So I was going to ask Bevan to cover that in general, and then someone had a very specific question about Microsoft Office Standard. So for licensing, Really what that means is um, it's, 
in, in most cases it's going to be what you need in order to use the product. So for instance, if you have um, if you're looking to request Microsoft Office, you would need the licensing for this product in order to be able to use it. Um, on each one of the product pages on the description, we do cover what licensing entails. Uh, for instance, um, an Adobe license can be used on a primary computer and a secondary computer, uh, but Microsoft can really only be used on one device. So uh, licensing really just covers um, what comes how many products you can use this computer on, and how you can, it's, it's, what ac it's, well, it's what allows you access to the product. And again, this information is usually covered on the description page of the product, toward, typically towards the front. Um, it will kind of briefly describe what one license or what each license entails. Um, some products come bulked together as um, multiple user licenses. For example, QuickBooks, you can request either one user or three users. So I hope that helps to clarify a little bit licensing. If not, ping it in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there are a couple other questions. Um, for Booth, does it cover all levels of the foundation? Sorry, I was still on mute. Uh, I believe all organization types including foundations are eligible, and therefore foundations uh, could also get a Boost subscription. And for foundations in general, and Bevan, correct me if I'm wrong, the budget that we ask for when we talk about foundations is their operating budget, not their granting budget. That's correct. So there, the tiers of small, medium, and large organizations for a foundation would be based on their annual operating budget. Great. Thank you. Um, we have some folks who are really interested in getting immediately started in ordering product donations. So the question, Bevan, is to begin receiving donations, all they need to do is register and get approved? That's correct. All you have to do is register. You can even begin to place donation requests before you're actually qualified, but you're not actually going to get them until we get a chance to get you guys all qualified and squared away. Um, so I would suggest you register your organization and shop around and add to your card if you need to. And then once we get you guys qualified, you'll be able to receive those donations uh, within a few business days if you're looking at software. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, great. I'm just checking to make sure that there aren't any unanswered questions. Um, just, just to remind everyone that you will have an opportunity in your survey to ask additional questions, or you can also select to be contacted by our client services representative. Okay. So what I'd like to do right now is just to take about 15 seconds, and in your chat box, we'd like to ask you to chat one thing that you learned in today's webinar, or one thing that you're going to do right after you get off this webinar. So take a minute to type in something you learned today. Great. Wow. People really learned a lot. Excellent. Yes, folks learned about TechSoup Hardware and Boost, some of our donation programs. A lot of you are going to go out and register right after this if you didn't already do it with us as we were doing this. Great. We're really happy that this was useful to you. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some upcoming webinars and events. We are January is just chock full of fun and informational webinars and events. We, next week we've got one about Office 365, features and tips for using Skype for business. We also have a grant station tour for those of you that are interested in fundraising. On 120 we have seven strategic fundraising tips for your nonprofit. On the 21st, there's also a webinar about funding up your organization this year and the state of grant seeking. And for our library friends, we have an, a webinar on 127, Technology Skills for Library Staff, Effective and Engaging Training Programs. 
And to start off the year, we're also going to be having a special offer for GrantStation on January 26th and 27th. It's a special discounted rate for a one-year membership for $99, and that's $200 less than the regular discounted fee and $600 less than retail. There's a little tip for you. Wait until the 26th or the 27th to place this product in your cart and order it. We do want to thank ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor. And we also want to thank you for coming to this webinar. We appreciate your attention, your time. Keep in mind that this is what we're here for. We're here to give you the tools and training you need to serve your customers. And we want to help you achieve your organization's mission. The best way for us to do this is for you to give us your feedback in the survey that will pop up when we close this out. So please take the time to give us your honest feedback. And there is a check off in that survey if you do want someone to reach out to if you have specific questions. So thank you Bevan for answering all of those burning questions, Ariel for going through all those product donations specials, and then Kevin, thank you for the back end work. Everyone have a great rest of your week, and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.